so hello world my name is Amelia and yes welcome back to another video not very many hours later after the last one I did I think it's been like maybe 12 hours maybe a little over that since I uploaded um so I thought I'm gonna actually do something a little different this time um I had a really amazing thing I wanted to talk about I thought it was um it was actually a really good topic um, very informative, another kind of little trans subject, stop bringing around the bush, Amelia, but, um, it's basically on the subject of trans identities, um, <clears throat> I was talking to my roommate this morning, and I had made, um, a comment about how I noticed that she kind of has a little bit of a feminine stereotype, okay, not at all a bad thing, um, Stereotypes aren't bad if they're in the right context. Usually a lot of people frame stereotypes in, in wrong in ways of like saying, oh, well, somebody's always that way, you know, and it's given as caution or reasons to always be, um, you know, on the guard for people who might be trying to deceive you. Um, but that's not at all what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about personalities. Um, feminine personalities that develop in transgender individuals. So I think that's a <laughs> great subject for me to want to talk a little bit about because I was um, going to get more into that because of my own. However, for as I get into this subject, I decided that this was an opportunity for me to also open my Ipsy bag. Uh, as I said, I got like three of these and it would be a little awkward. Like I've tried to do fast forward videos in the past where it's like all of a sudden I do all my Ipsy videos or all my Ipsy bags in one video. Um, I've also done ones where, I don't know, I don't think I've really tried to space them out yet, like individually. So let's just say that this is gonna be a video where I'm gonna do the one video. Um, and we'll do, we'll see what's in that video. And then I will, uh, Well, that was a very weird seal. And then I will also talk about this subject. So, kind of a little double. So, I don't know what month this is. Like I said, I, I think I said in my last video that I should start writing on them what month I got them in. Yeah, that never happened. Reason being is because I never anticipate to just put them on the table. And so I'm like, oh, I'll get to it eventually. So, this is kind of cool. Ooh, like a rosy pattern. I think this might be one of the more recent ones. Let's see here. Ah, May. Okay, so this is last month's bag. Um, I know I got this month. So there, I think there's either, I know I got this month and last month. I might, I don't know, I could be wrong. Maybe there's only two bags. So, um, the first thing I wanted to say about the whole feminine identities thing, and I mean, makeup is actually a really great, um, subject of that. Ooh, we love moms. That's cute. Um, let's see here. There's, um, I'll just try to summarize these so I don't take too long. So, um, in this bag, we have a, um, perfume, a Luna fragrance. That's cute. Um, a matte, <laughs> matte as hell. I love that. That's good. Um, lip crayon in Miss Rosa. Citrus Amaro hand cream, Infinity Sleeping Lip Mask, Nail Liquor in Take It Off. Take It Off Now. Okay. So, I know I'm basically going to just spoil the whole bag right up front. Um, it looks like four out of the five are just samples, deluxe samples, and the nail polish is a full size like it usually is. So the one thing about feminine identities that I notice, and I mean, you, you notice them in women. There's your tomboyish type, and then you got your really girly girl type. You got your prissy girl. You know, we also have your uh, basic white. And, you know, there, every woman has her style, has her personality. And then on top of that, there's that sub-personality that makes them an individual. That's kind of how I believe personalities are a little bit structured. You have your basic types. And then not to mention you got your cliques. There's some people that kind of develop personalities over cliques. That same 
thing, yes, yeah, so the same thing can happen um, amongst men. Men can also tendency to have um, cliques, personalities. You know, you got your metrosexuals. Um, you got more of your very flamboyant personalities. However, I think these personalities can be very much more ranging amongst women. And I don't know, I, I can't really frame up other than that. Okay. First up, ooh, hand cream. That'd be nice. Skinning Co. Roma Smoothing Treatment with Organic Orange Extract, Citrus, Amato. <laughs> Why do I keep like accenting that word? Hand cream. Umbria? Beauty. Okay. So I'll try this first product. Oh, can't forget the safety feel. <laughs> I know it's fresh. <laughs> fresh, organic, citrus. Okay, I cannot. <sighs> By the way, if anybody ever is like, is there something up with our thumbs? So, yeah, my thumbs are kind of nasty right now. Um, I have always had, I have always, um, oh my gosh, I got some of that in my mouth. I just couldn't get that thing off the tip. Ooh, that's nice. I've always kind of had, um, candida issues, which is <clears throat> a fungal in infection. When I was ever, since I was ever, I was always young. I, I don't know, I might just have a genetic, I know it also kind of has a tendency to the fact that I eat a lot of sugar. Um, and I try to cut it out of my diet like everyone. Um, I used to I used to get it really, really bad. Like it's gotten better in my adulthood. Interesting. Orangish. I'm not even sure if I like that. It's got like a, a an orange hint to it. So I do have this on my desk. This was the peach tea, which I opened a while ago. This one I, I left on my desk because it's, um, it's more of a, I like this one, nice and smooth. Now, I would definitely say it's got a different feel to it. It's more greasy or it, more residue. Well, this did seem to dry pretty quickly like that. Anyways, I always had a candida problem. So like almost every one of my nails when I was younger had growth syndrome. It was nasty. A lot of them healed on their own, but, um, I don't know, over the last few years, as I've dealt with a lot of like weight loss and weight and gain and all that, I don't know why, but my thumbs have always been really, really bad with candida. Um, so I finally, I, I had always like try to cut trim them and clean it out underneath and treat them and it just never really seemed to do much for me and finally the other day I know I really shouldn't um I was just noticing how much the nail had started coming off the nail bed it was just getting so gross and nasty I was kind of covering it up with nail polish and stuff like that like it didn't look that bad and I was kind of ignoring it and then finally I was like you know what it's never going to grow back to normal so I kind of went to the extreme and I took a, a really nice uh, close nail clippers and I just basically cleaned. So there's still like the sub, the sub layer nail that the nail bed is still nice and tacked and it's nice and hard. I cleaned it up really good, got all that candy out of there. I trimmed it back and, and then I just cleaned it until it was completely back to nice and healthy nail. So the goal is, is hopefully, <laughs> hopefully uh, that nail will grow back normal. Now that the candida is nice and cleaned out, it's not just infecting new nail that's growing out. Um, kind of got the same problem over here. It's not as trimmed back, but still kind of trying to clean it up. Anyways, uh, now that I spent that two minutes on that <laughs> side trip, um, so the, the whole identities thing is, is very interesting to me. So my roommate, she, um, was in the car, like this morning she was getting all cheeky with me about, you know, kind of being like, Ooh, I like these panties and things like that. And I was like, Oh my gosh. Like I've known this for a very long time. She's, she's a very out there. She's a very social creature. 
she puts herself out there she goes to bars she hangs out she flirts with other girls you know she's very very unashamed to be who she is which i think is amazing i totally support that but that's definitely not something in myself that i've seen um nail liquor which we take it off take it off now okay oh that is a yeah speaking of nails <laughs> um i do have i do have a couple clean nails here we can try this i've always it's, they've sent me nail polish before and it's always been very fascinating okay that's uh huh that is um my nail is a little short on this end to actually do this but at least i get to kind of coat it okay it's actually okay i do have to say the color's not too bad very odd smell it doesn't smell like normal nail polish um so that's the color it's not a bad color because i have to say that maybe more recently i've been wearing more neutral colors um i also got i also got these nail stickers i got them from china uh spent like 70 cents a sheet so way cheaper than um like this 12 dollar sheet ones out there which i mean are a little better quality, but I've been able to go almost three, four weeks with one of those, and they're just, that's when they're time to come off. Um, there's pros and cons to it. Anyways, I mean, this is a nice color. It's definitely the kind of color I'd probably just wear if I needed to just throw something on, but of course, I'm getting pretty in love with the stickers, so we're using a liquor, a lick, lacquer, a lacquer. <laughs> so, in myself, because I was, so when I was talking to my roommate about the, the thing, all of a sudden I kind of in the car, I was like, oh my gosh. I'm like, you are, I was like, you have, you have a, a flair about your feminine identity and stuff like that. And she, she kind of was like, what do you mean? What do you mean? She always gives me a hard time. Sometimes she yanks me the wrong way and I'm like, mm, why you gotta do this to me? Just let me be me. Just let me be messed up. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, so I explained to her, I said, it's, it's like a very, it's a very out there social personality. Like it's almost borderline basic white. Um, but I don't, I, it's almost not that I, you know, I told her, I was like, I don't really have a word for it. I just recognize that you've developed a, a feminine personality you have a feminine personality about you. You like to flirt. You like to put yourself out there. Um, you like, I mean, she wears, she goes over and above and beyond wearing dresses and, you know, doing her makeup. And she's got her hair always like gorgeous. I'm so jealous of her hair. She's got nice bangs and I don't. I feel like I got nothing up here. Stupid biology. Um, I mean, it's, my mom has problems with her bangs too. Mine are probably even thinner for obvious reasons, but, um, infinity sleeping lip mask. That's, so what you like put it on before bed on your lips. Why does everything like smell like, I know my smell, my smells like really messed up ever since I had COVID back in December, but speaking of which going to another weird subject. I have lately noticed for some odd reason, I have told people I've had COVID and then the next question I get is, are you sure you had COVID? I'm like, I'm sorry, did, did you did you not know we were in a pandemic? <laughs> like all of a sudden I get treated like, oh, you're, you're, oh, you're doing good, you're fine, you only lost your, oh, okay, are you sure you had COVID? I'm like, what the frick is wrong with you? I'm like, yes, I had a positive test that said I had COVID. Why? Twice in a row, too. Why are you all of a sudden, like, questioning if I actually had COVID? Like, you didn't, no one questioned me back in December or January. Why is it now that I'm being questioned if I actually had COVID or not? So, anyway, it's just a funny, funny little tidbit that I, I've had. Ooh, that, like, 
Okay, it kind of like liquefied when I touched it. I expected it to be. It doesn't, it doesn't really have a smell to it. Um, yeah, not, not really much of a smell to it. Um, so the full price on that is $16 for 20 grams. This is a 0.1, then it's $12 for the other my roommate walk on upstairs I'll actually be right back okay I'm back sorry about that little uh, interruption I'll try to finish this up my roommate is actually going out of town and I knew she was gonna want to say bye to me and everything so a little easier just to take the interruption um so where was I yeah so on feminine identities it's very interesting um, <laughs> matte as hell crayon lipstick, <laughs> which, um, so this is a, wow, $21. This is just a deluxe sample. Um, 2.5 grams. I love how the full size is just 2.8 grams. Like, that's almost not even worth saying that there's a full size in a, anyways, um, so, I mean, an identity, a feminine identity was something that I even noticed develop in myself as I came out. Before my egg cracked, as a lot of trans people like to say about themselves, um, I was much more feminine, like I had ultra feminine tendencies, like, I, you know, when I was not, I don't even want to say not in not me or anything like that like because that wasn't even me like if, if I've gone back and like looked at those old photos of what I looked like when I was you know in my 20s and I was questioning and I was cross-dressing and stuff like that and that still wasn't me funny enough like I still don't feel connect like I don't now look back to that and go oh hey look it's me no I never do that like I look at those back of those old photos and and to me it it's just a it's just a guy in a dress I mean not to say that I'm which uh, oh my gosh that kind of goes into another subject of being hard on your past self I you know I've I've actually um, again another two-minute story that hopefully it doesn't go two minutes I one time I posted online um, on reddit on a on a trans post about you know how you know, I was critical of my past self. Like literally, I posted an old photo of me and I was critical talking about, oh, the things he didn't know, the fact that he didn't know how to do eyeliner. I was being really hard on that. And then somebody made a comment about, like they translated that into that day, because they were like in the phase that he was in. And, and they, they took it as I was being critical of them. And I was like, no, no, I, I made a comment, I said, that is nothing to critical. Like that is a very important phase. I respect and honor that phase I went through. I said, however, I'm being critical of the lack of knowledge. I said, and I framed it up. I said, it would be the, the identical to if somebody who one day became a doctor went and then pointed at their pre-graduate, their pre-educated self of, how stupid they were and how little they knew. It doesn't mean that they respect that phase. They respect that there was a phase that they didn't know all the stuff they know then, but they're being critical of just how much they didn't know. That is what I was saying, was I'm being critical of my past self of, he really didn't know much. I know so much more now, but that doesn't invalidate him or anyone else that might be in that phase it's a very important phase and people like me are more than happy to try to help people like that get through that phase as soon as possible anyways I like lip grams are not bad I actually enjoy them it's not a 
I know I sometimes I do that I mean I really shouldn't but it's not a terrible color I definitely wouldn't do anything redder than this like this is almost as red as the red button on my screen uh so anyways yeah not exactly like that would look good if I had the right matching makeup so in myself I, I had a I had an, an identity that that developed that came out of um you know it, it, it just like any other trans woman I've met those identities develop they come out of they it really is like going through puberty they talk about how taking HRT puts you through a your feminine puberty and it really is because that's that's the phase that girls develop their feminine personalities um so it's the same thing for a trans woman um and the other thing I pointed out to her is I was just I, I said to her so I was like what were you like before what were you like prior to realizing you were trans and she tells me that people around her it's an interesting perfume box um which by the way $90 for the full size. The full size is 100 milliliters. And this is only 10. So this is a tenth of that. So nine bucks worth. Um, so I, she tells me, she's like, well, a lot of people would say that she was quiet, reserved, um, kept to herself, you know, easy to talk to in small groups, outgoing in those situations. And then I looked at her and I was like, you know what? that was very similar to what people said about me prior to realizing, especially prior to my 20s before I started cross-dressing. Because when I started cross-dressing in my 20s, <laughs> fail. <laughs> oh, that's not bad. It's actually not too bad. I, I like it. It's, it's not too strong. doesn't have a strong alcohol smell to it like these uh these brands over here I, I know I saw it over here earlier that Juliet has a gun brand that I've I've had those actually have very strong alcohol smells to them but they're they're still good they're pretty good so anyways um so that's the ipsy bag Let's see one two three four five five items what a pretty good value bag I like the items so to finish this video up, I, um, I told her how I was like, you know, that's what a lot of people would have said about me when I was pre twenties, um, very quiet, very reserved, not outgoing, kept to myself. I was also very shy. I was also very afraid to put myself out there. Um, I know I said this yesterday about the, the euphoria I experienced as being able to do what I do to transition, it has allowed me to be much more outgoing and, and able to put myself out there. And um, I, um, I believe that, you know, I'm not the only one. Like I haven't met too many trans women who were not like that prior to their egg cracking. Um, so something I realized that was very important for myself is the fact that when I was, I had a really hard time accepting this. When I first started transitioning, I felt very ashamed of the fact that when I was five, I actually liked trains. I had an interest in trains. It was something that I actually really enjoyed doing. I bought train magazines. I always want my parents to buy trains at the garage sales. Like I was into it and I, I was okay with it then because I saw it as something that boys were accepted, acceptable for liking. Even though I had interests also in American Girl dolls, never publicly expressed it. And it was funny because when I came out, it was actually very hard for me to own to that, to be like, you know, come out to people and say, yeah, I'm really a girl. I've been this way my entire life. And then to go, 
yeah and then you know kind of almost be afraid like they would sit there and say well what about the train interest you know of course being sexist and then it occurred to me this was probably in the last two or three years that all of a sudden well no two years at most i all of a sudden said to myself i go i'm okay with this as my feminine identity developed I realized I was okay with it because as I started transitioning and I started becoming who I really was, I think I almost was like disappointed in myself. Not to say I was then all of a sudden questioning if I made the right choice. No, far from it. I knew I made the right choice. I knew I was going about that right. But I think I was disappointed because I was so much more had flares of girly moments prior and I had kind of expected transitioning and then I was going to be girly all the time. I expected that to be the norm for me. But as my feminine identity developed, it actually turned out to be to the opposite. I actually came to find out that I have more tomboyish tendencies. I tend to like you know, not dressing up all the time. I kind of like putting a little makeup flare on, putting my hair up and then being like, hey, I'm going out and just being me. I'm not, I'm not going to dress up and make myself look good just because people say I'm supposed to. I'm very much against, you know, like it, it's kind of like the whole thing about, um, there was a time I was very misogynistic and believed that women should not wear leggings. Like, I'm like, oh, that's so shameful. Like I was like, I was the worst person ever. But then after deciding the transition, it was pretty quickly, I mean, like I wore so many skirts in my early 20s. And then it got to a point where I started wearing jeans and leggings, something I was critical of women for. And then all of a sudden I'm like, no, women should be allowed to wear these things. They should be allowed to make their own choices. They should be allowed. I turned into a much bigger feminist but it's the same thing about the trains. I said, this is okay. I'm okay with this because girls can like trains too. It allowed me to accept myself, to come to terms as now, my feminine identity, that personality that has developed two and a half years into transitioning is one that's girly I like my makeup. I like doing it. I love my hair. I love putting it up. I love freaking dresses, which by the way, this is my <laughs> Stitch Fix dress. I love it. It's so cute. And, but I do realize that sometimes I don't feel like being a girl. Not to, not to say that I have a, a masculine, like, I'm not that. It's not, you know, a changing gender. What I'm trying to say is I don't feel like doing what people think I should do. I want to dress enough to be like, hey, I feel comfortable. I'm wearing leggings today and a t-shirt that's over baggy. I try to avoid stuff that makes me look too masculine. But in general, I'm okay with this. It makes me happy because this as I found um, someone said to me the other day from my church, I did this for me. I transitioned for me. I didn't transition for other people. This is not for them. This is for me. This is for the person who felt like they were locked up inside of a shell their entire life, who couldn't be themselves. And today I'm a much more open I mean, I finally, for the first time on, on Saturday, I was over at my parents' house and my dad was misgendering me a couple times and I finally stood up for myself. I sat back at the table and I finally said, dad, would you please not do that? And I kind of caught him off guard and I, and I just said, I said, I'm just trying to stand up for myself. That's something I would have never done. Past me would have never, ever done that. So... I'm going to stop ranting. This is going to 30 minutes, but at least I'm not feeling 
too guilty for this really long video, being that I did an ipsy bag, I told two two-minute stories, and I also covered, I think, pretty, pretty extensively. And I think, I think the subject of personalities are just important because it's good for a trans woman, and any women for that matter, to be comfortable with who they are. Don't let society tell you who you are. I mean, in a way, it's a, it's a message of escape stereotypes. Strive to change them. Strive to be different, to think <laughs> different, like the old Apple slogan goes from, man, I don't remember that slogan. What was that, it was like the 90s, I think, they had that slogan. All right, I'm gonna leave this here. I hope you're all having an amazing day. Hopefully, I'm not gonna all of a sudden make another daily video, which I mean, these aren't terrible. It's just, I need to be inspired. And I also hate it when all of a sudden my filming habits change. It's not really fun to me. So, have an amazing day. Don't forget to like and follow, subscribe. Um, how many things can I say until you actually do it? I do love the fact that I am, um, I have been gaining a couple subscribers, so keep those coming. <laughs> so I will see you in the future. Bye now.